Okay, welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an AI-powered web application by only writing a few lines of code. Uh, we're going to use Bubble for the front end, like Bubble.io, and AWS for the back end. We'll use some a few services from Amazon, namely Lambda API Gateway and Recognition, which is Amazon's image recognition and processing API. Um, and by only writing about a dozen lines of code, uh, we're going to write an app that can determine the number of cats in a photo. And you can do lots of other things with the same API and changing the code slightly, but uh, just for demonstration purposes, we're going to count the number of cats. So I'll show you what that looks like here as an example. Okay, so here's an example of what we're building towards. Uh, this app allows the user to upload a photo and analyze it and return the number of cats. So we click here, we choose a photo with cats in it. Uh, this one has three cats in it. One, two, three, we click Analyze Image, and down here it should return three. We can do another one with five cats. Uh, do the same thing. You can see there's five cats. We click Analyze, and we get five cats. So that's what we're working towards. Um, it'll probably look a little bit different when we're done, but um, we'll follow the same basic format. You can also see down here it returns the labels of what the API thinks is in the photo. Um, we're sort of parsing this to return this, but uh, we'll get to that later. Um, so an overview of what we'll be talking about here is um, we'll start off by talking about, let's just do this here, start off talking about the architecture and outline of the different components and how they all fit together. Then I'll go through an introduction to Bubble. Uh, this won't be a comprehensive intro to Bubble if you've never used it before. Um, I will link to some resources in the description that will, can help you get started, but I'll try to cover everything meaningful here. Um, this video is targeted more at intermediate bubble users that have a bit of development experience. I'll try to go through everything necessary so that if you don't have any experience writing code or you don't have any experience using bubble, that it's uh, still comprehensible, but um, it's more of an intermediate level um, discussion. Uh, after talking about bubble, I'll go into the AWS services we'll be using. Um, we'll look at recognition and Lambda, then API gateway, um, and then I'll sort of build the app in reverse. We'll start with an API and Lambda, and then we'll connect it to recognition. Um, yeah, that's what we'll do down here. So um, these two sections here, I'll just give a brief overview of the two services. Uh, so let's get into it. So the architecture of the application is going to look something like this. Um, we're going to have bubble on the front end. Um, and that's going to be, um, if we go back here, that's going to be all of this stuff, um, the uploader, the display, uh, the buttons, that kind of stuff. So we'll build that in bubble. Um, it's very, very quick. If you've never used no code or low code platforms, uh, you can build interfaces like this extremely fast. And that's arguably their most uh, important, or their most valuable uh, draw or feature. Um, they speed up development time enormously. Um, and yeah, after we do that, so we'll use um, the interface to pass data to API Gateway. We're going to pass that image that we upload to uh, an API that we define in AWS. Uh, that will connect to a Lambda function, uh, which will then pass data to recognition. So if uh, API Gateway and Lambda are unfamiliar to you, they are two of Amazon's serverless tools or offerings. Um, serverless applications are, are great. They're a new way of architecting apps that uh, don't require you to deploy or maintain servers. So Lambda is just code that runs in an execution environment that uh, spins up as needed. You just, you're just you charged for the amount of time that the code runs. Um, you don't have to worry about EC2 instances or, or maintaining servers or anything like that. Um, we'll get into how to operate that later. Uh, an API gateway just allows you to set up REST or HTTP um, API endpoints, custom endpoints to, to trigger actions um, often in the Amazon ecosystem. So in our case, we're going to send data to this API, um, to a custom API that we define through API gateway, and then that's going to pass it to Lambda. Um, if this seems abstract, it, it'll be concrete soon. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do first is just look at the recognition uh, documentation and see what the API can do and how it performs on the photos that we're interested in. And then we'll um, we'll leave that aside until we've got uh, these three components connected, uh, the bubble interface with the, the API and, and Lambda. So let's go back to Firefox. Uh, so I've got the recognition um, 
documentation open here, but what I actually wanted was the recognition page. So if you've never used Amazon uh, Web Services before, um, there are two different ways that you can uh, access the different services after you log into Amazon. Uh, again, I'm not going to go through setting up an account. There are lots of tutorials online to set up an AWS account, but uh, once you're logged in, um, there are two different ways that you can find the service you're looking for. You can type the name of it in here, and you can see recognition is the first thing that comes up, uh, or you can click services. And um, the, use, the nice thing about this view is you can see all the different machine learning services that AWS offers. Uh, we're going to do some tutorials on some of these other services, um, probably um, transcribe and comprehend, uh, but we'll cover those in later videos. Um, so yeah, so we want to see the um, the recognition API. So we click on that. Okay, so now that we're logged in, um, if we go to the recognition uh, landing page. This, uh, this sort of describes what the API can do uh, with various demos over here that we can look at. So if we go to the object and scene detection, this is the, the part of the API that we're going to be calling and using. Um, you can see here a photo uh, with a bunch of objects labeled, cars, wheels, skateboard, person, and so forth. Um, there's another one down here with uh, buildings, and cityscape. Um, what we can do is upload our own photo and see how it performs on that, which I'll do in a second. Uh, you can also see over here that the same API can be used to do image moderation, which is detecting content that's not safe for work um, and blurring it if, it's, if it detects that it is. Um, you can do facial analysis and comparison celebrity recognition, and so on. Um, this is an interesting one where you can extract text from images. Um, but the function that we're going to be using is the object and scene detection. So if we take one of our cat photos, like these three cats here, and upload it, um, it'll show us over here what the results uh, of the API will return. You can see these are the various labels that it attaches, kitten, cat, pet, and so forth. Um, this request shows us. Um, what, um, how to call the API, what the format, the JSON structure should look like when we call this API. And we'll come back to this when we start programming. This is unfamiliar. Um, and then this is what you actually get back when you call the API. So these uh, GUI front ends that all, most of the machine learning services have are just a way to explore what the API can do. They're not really um, meant to be used this way. Um, they're they're really just demonstrations. So if we look here at the results, we can see there's one, two, three, and four boxes. Um, we will get around this in the programming to make it return the right number of cats um, when we get to the Lambda functions. But um, this uh, this is just an artifact of, um, of uh, these being probabilistic uh, detections. So if you look if we look down here, we can see these are the um, these are the actual predictions. Oh, pardon me, that's not what I meant to do. Um, and they all have a confidence score attached to them. And you can see this last one has a, a low confidence score. So effectively, what we're going to do is set a confidence threshold later to um, to tell the, the function to drop this one, basically. Um, we can see the same thing if we, if we open, say, this seven cats one. Um, oh, it's not allowing us to do that. Uh, let's say five cats. Um, we can see here there's one, two, three, four, five, six. It does the same thing, sort of grouping these two cats together. Um, and again, if we go down here, we can see that the confidence for the last one is below 70. Um, yeah. So anyway, this is a way to just play around with the API. Um, from here, once you're ready to start programming, um, there's typically links to the documentation down below uh, in this particular case. Um, I don't think they're on this page, but uh, if we go maybe here, yeah, you can see there's um, down here, we've got um, different materials to help you learn. Um, I've opened the, this is the developer guide, the DG for this API, and as well as the, uh, the guide for the Photo 3 uh, client. So this is the Python 3, um, Photo 3 is the Amazon um, it's the SDK for interacting with Amazon services. So if you're using Python in Lambda functions or elsewhere to interact with Amazon services, you use typically use Boto 3. Um, if you're curious, Boto is a dolphin, I guess, from the Amazon. 3 is just the version. So yeah, 
these we will refer to as we're uh, building up the code later. It shows us the structure of a, a request and a response to, to later parse. Um, so we'll, we'll come back to these later. Um, and this, this developer guide section here has the, pardon me, the code for um, some example code for Python, which we'll copy and modify uh, once we get to building it. So uh, that's the recognition introduction. Um, now we'll talk a little bit about uh, API Gateway and Lambda, which uh, are the two, two of the core pieces of AWS serverless. Um, so let's go over to um, API Gateway. Oops. So API Gateway, uh, as I said in the introduction, is just a way to define, it's a tool to define custom API endpoints. Um, if you've never built an API before, it stands for Application Programming Interface, and it's a way for computer programs to talk to one another effectively. Um, so by setting up an endpoint, we, um, we provide a way for Bubble to talk to our our suite of Amazon services. So I've defined these APIs um, in advance, um, but I'll show you now how to define one um, from scratch. And then after we define an API, we're gonna attach it to a Lambda function, um, which will just be a hello world example in the beginning, and then we'll change the functionality later. Um, um, actually, I'm gonna back up a little bit. I'm gonna do the bubble front end first, uh, as I mentioned in the intro, and then I'll come back and do this part. So the to go back to bubble um, if you create a new application you'll get a dialogue like this we're going to say recognition demo um, these uh, various drop downs um, i i believe have to do with um, the templates and things that the the bubble platform will present to you as as potentially helpful um, i don't think they're super important for our sake i'm just going to click various things. We'll call this recognition demo two, because I already built one called recognition demo, I guess. Um, I'll take a second to, to build a new workspace, and then we'll, um, we'll start building out the interface. It won't take long um, to build the picture uploader and the text field to return some data. So we're just going to say start with a blank page. Um, there's going to be some boilerplate here, which we don't need. Um, this is The boilerplate is, is really quite nice, actually, with these bubble apps. Um, but we're going to leave that alone for now. Um, just a, a note, if you've never used Bubble before, the first time you log in, you'll be prompted with a tutorial. Um, I strongly recommend doing that. It's very helpful. Uh, they recommend doing it first on easy mode with the, the arrows, the indications on, and then doing it again on hard mode with the arrows off. Um, that's how I learned. I would recommend doing that. Um, but we're going to skip that for now. So now we're here in the, the Bubble interface. The first thing um, to to note if you've never uh, been in here before is you've got sort of some status things and uh, we, we'll come back to later on the top. Um, for example, if you want to deploy your app, you do it here. Um, if you want to preview your app, you click this, you manage your account this with this button. Um, over here in this, this column, this is sort of the main um, way to access the, the various things you can put into your uh, design or your interface. This is sort of the blank canvas where you can build things. So you can put some text here and say whatever, you can put buttons and images and so forth. Um, so what we're gonna do, uh, first of all, is we're gonna get rid of these things. I'm gonna try to get rid of them anyway. <laughs> uh, here we go. So we're gonna say, the first thing we're gonna do is put a picture uploader element, which is here, um, which will allow the user to upload a picture. Not surprisingly. And um, then down here, we're going to, below it, we'll put some text. And we'll just say, hello. For now, later, we're going to change this text to um, to reflect the number of cats in the photo after we return it from the API. Um, but we'll fill that in later. So for now, um, we, if we click Preview, um, It'll bring us to a screen where we can see what we've just built. Um, and as I said before, if you've never used these platforms before, oh, don't mind me here. This is just a browser plugin that I forgot to turn off. Um, if you've never used these platforms before, it's it's extremely fast to build things like this. So now we've got this element that we can click on, and we can click um, we can click a photo from our file picker on our computer. 
Um, you see this progress bar loading here, and then boom, we have a photo. Um, and that's uh, most of what we need to do to get this photo into Bubble um, and then send it later. We'll send it off to AWS, but that's it. So um, yeah, let's call this the, the first sort of rough draft of the interface. This is all we need. And the next thing we're going to do is set up an API through API Gateway. Um, and we're going to call it, we're going to leave the image sort of out of it for now, but we're going to call the API and return some hello world text that's going to go in here. Um, so let's go back to our, um, ignore that, ignore that. Uh, we will go, let's do this. Let's put some text in here that's unknown and set up an API to, to change this. Uh, okay, so the first thing to do, um, go back to API Gateway here. Um, the first time you log into API Gateway, if you've never created an API before, uh, it will not look like this. You'll have a big uh, header splash. Um, if I change, um, if I change regions, actually, you might see that. Um, just for the sake of demonstration, this is probably what you'll see if you've never built an API before. Um, and it says choose an API type. We're going to be using a REST API. Um, I'm going to go back to the uh, US East 1 region. It's important to note if you're doing this that uh, your API and your Lambda function need to be in the same region, I think. Um, so we'll go back to US East 1, and then we'll see the, the standard um, dialogue screen here. Um, so we click Create API. We get these same choices that we saw as those four tiles before. And we're going to click REST API. Um, so we get this configuration, let's say recognition, oh, recognition demo to API. Um, this description is optional. We just leave the endpoint as regional and create API. This is why I wasn't sure this regional dialogue, whether it needs to be in the same region, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Just leave it as default. Uh, and then we get this screen and this is the sort of the API builder, uh, canvas or screen. It's kind of confusing if you've never used this. It's not clear what to do in the beginning. Um, so there are three main concepts to be aware of um, here. This is sort of the main driver of this uh, system. Um, the three concepts are create method, create resource, and stages. So a method is an endpoint. It's, a, it's where uh, you will call an API. Um, this is sort of the core of the whole thing. Um, a resource is a way of clustering different endpoints together. If you have um, if you have a complicated application with a bunch of different endpoints, you'll probably want to create resources. Uh, we're just going to create a single endpoint for this tutorial, so we're not going to bother with resources. Um, and then the other thing is a stage. You need to have a stage defined in order to deploy your API. So you can have a test stage and a production stage or a, a development stage or whatever, um, which I'll show you in a second. So the first thing to do is just create a method and just create an endpoint. Um, the type of endpoint we're going to be using is post. If you've never created APIs and seen these, these are the HTTP verbs. These are the different ways of um, basically calling it uh, APIs. Um, we're going to use a post API because we're going to be sending the image uh, through a post request, which uh, post requests allow you to send more data per request than uh, get, which is a, arguably the standard way of calling an API. Um, I'll talk more about this a little bit later. So we click post and we click and uh, check mark, and now we've got an API. Um, okay, so the type, the integration type we want is set to Lambda function by default, and that's what we want. Um, and then down here, um, we can specify which which Lambda function. Uh, just realized I'm doing this backwards, so I'm going to pause. Um, I'm going to hold the API gateway dialog here for a minute. And then I'm going to hop over to Lambda to create the function, which we are going to link to this API. So hopefully this isn't too confusing. Um, so we type Lambda in here. You can also access it by clicking services, and it's right here. Um, I wonder if I just abandon that API, if it's still there. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we can create it again pretty quickly. Um, OK, so this is the, the Lambda creation console. Um, same thing with the API gateway. It won't look like this if you've never created a function. You'll see, uh, let's see what you'll see. Um, if we go to a different region, you'll probably see the same kind of thing with a big splash header and um, some options for creating functions. Uh, okay. Ignore that again. Same. It's a 
JavaScript blocking plugin that interrupts things sometimes. OK, so I guess I was wrong. So it does look the same if you've created a function before or not. Uh, we'll go back to US East. So these are the ones I've created before. Uh, we can ignore these. Let's create a new one and call it, um, we'll call it recognition demo two to keep everything consistent. Um, you have different options here for how to, excuse me, start creating your API, uh, your Lambda function. We're just going to author from scratch. It just creates a simple hello world, uh, just returns some text. Um, there are predefined Lambda functions that are useful that you can find in the serverless app repository and, and so forth, but we're going to leave those alone for now. Um, so you want to set a name and a runtime. The runtime we want to use is Python 3.8. Um, it's There's nice support for Ruby and Node and Java and so forth, but uh, we're going to use Python. And we're going to leave permissions default. Um, by default, uh, it creates a new role for your Lambda function. Um, we're going to be using the IAM console. Uh, IAM is Identity Access Management, which is um, Amazon's permissions system. Uh, we're going to be modifying the permissions for this Lambda function later uh, to allow it to access the recognition API. But for now, we're just going to leave it um, as default. By default, all it can really do is um, write to CloudWatch, which is Amazon's logging system, which we will look at as well in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, we'll add permissions as we need them rather than doing it now. Um, so yeah, all you need to do is type a name, select Python 3.8, and, and click Create Function. And it'll take a second to create the function. And um, it'll bring us to the Lambda console where we can actually write the code. Um, so yeah, now that it's loaded, you get this success message. Let's close this here. Um, so up here, you've got your overview. You've got triggers, which is how this function is called. Uh, we're going to be calling it through API Gateway, which uh, will show up here after we define that. And then destinations are things like if you want your Lambda function to write to a database like DynamoDB, uh, you'll, you can see that here sometimes uh, when it was modified and so forth. You scroll down a bit, you've got these tabs here, code to, to write code. Um, there's a pretty powerful um, code editor provided by Lambda. Um, if you're just writing a little bit of code or a simple function, um, it's plenty capable. If you're doing a lot of development, um, it gets a little bit hairy. Um, version control is a bit tricky, and writing automated tests and things doesn't quite work. Um, we're going to release a video later, um, maybe stick it on the end of this one, uh, that shows how to, to write um, in IDEs or, or Vim, um, how to write and, and operate sort of locally on the terminal and, and not use this uh, code editor um, if you have preferences otherwise. But for now, we'll just use this, this code editor. Um, yeah, so you this Lambda function is the, um, this is the core thing. This is, um, this is your function. This is what runs when you call it as of right now. Um, we'll get into how to modify that later. But um, yeah, so this is what the code looks like by default. Up here, you've also got a test tab. Um, for testing the function, um, and you can monitor it, configure it, and so forth. And we'll get into some of these tabs uh, in just a minute. So by default, um, you've got this, this boilerplate with the status code and a body returned. So um, all this function is doing, let's see if I can make this a bit bigger. It's importing the JSON module to allow you to parse JSON data. Um, so something worth mentioning is that um, both API Gateway and Lambda uh, operate primarily in JSON. JSON is uh, JavaScript object notation. It's a, it's a way of structuring data that is sort of a standard on the web. Um, you sort of you have something like this. Well, actually, you know what? I'll show you. When we create a test event, I'll show you what the structure is. Um, so data coming into a, a Lambda function is typically, or is often JSON, and data going out is, is almost always JSON. It can be text, but um, JSON is, is a little bit more powerful. So yeah, by default, all it, says, all it does is return hello from Lambda. So if we click test, um, the first time you click test, it'll um, ask you to define a test event. Um, we'll just say default. Um, oops. And here is the JSON uh, that I was mentioning. Um, we're not going to be using any of these values right now, the, the key value pairs. 
um, but you need to have something in here. So you got these curly braces to open and close um, a JSON structure or a dictionary. And then in double quotes, you have the name of the key, um, then a colon, then double quotes, the name of the value, and then a comma. Um, so yeah, that's the basic structure of JSON. We click create. And now we have a test event. If we click it again, it'll run. Um, what it will do is call the Lambda function with that JSON. Um, and we're going to be using the, uh, the structure of the test event later. So I'll, I'll come back to that later. But for now, um, here's the response. A status code of 200 and a body that says hello from Lambda. OK, so now we have a Lambda function. Um, we're going to create an API through API Gateway that um, that can connect to this Lambda function. So if we go back to API Gateway, um, it will be nice if the API that we started to define is still here um, as a stub, but if not, that's okay. Okay, so it's here. Um, we click on it. Um, okay, and so the method is not set up, but it's sort of stubbed out. So we click set up now. Uh, that's good. And as I mentioned before, we want Lambda function integration. Um, you want to click this box, Lambda proxy integration. Uh, it just passes the, uh, the data straight through to the function. Um, yeah, if you're interested in the details, uh, check out the documentation. It's not really important for right now. Um, and then just start typing anything in this dialog, in this input box, and uh, you can see your various Lambda functions. This is the one that we just defined, recognition demo two. Um, and by def and then the last parameter is the default timeout. Um, by default, it's 29 seconds or 29,000 milliseconds. Um, that's a really long time for what we're going to be doing. So change it to 10 seconds. Um, doesn't matter. You can leave that default if you want. It doesn't matter a whole lot. Click OK. Um, and then we should have our, uh, our API set up. Um, now you can test your, um, your API and its connection to the Lambda function by clicking test. Um, you can pass um, JSON or text or whatever in this request body here. But because the Lambda function isn't using any, um, any input, we don't need to bother. Click test, and we get the response from hello from Lambda. Now, just to show you um, how to change that and what it looks like, if we go back to this, this is our, our Lambda function again. Um, if we come back to the code, you can see here there's the code and the, the results of testing it. Um, if we say instead, hello from launchable, then you click deploy. Uh, this won't be, uh, the code that's accessible won't be changed until you click deploy. I click deploy, and then it goes green. Um, and then we go back to API Gateway and test it again. We can see hello from launchable. OK, so we know that the API is connected to the Lambda function. But at this point, you can only access this API sort of internally through the, the test methods. If you want to be able to access it externally, you need to deploy it. So we say actions um, deploy API. Now, it'll ask for a stage. We don't have any defined, so we can click new stage. And let's just call it demo. It can be anything. And click deploy. Um, so now we have a deployed API. Um, and this is the URL that we would use to, to call that API. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this URL and we're going to plug it into Bubble so that instead of calling this API just internally through test methods, we're going to call the API through Bubble and return that hello from launchable text that the Lambda function produces. So to go back to our, um, oh, pardon me, to go back to our overview uh, here, um, sorry. We have uh, we've defined the API gateway and the, and the Lambda function, just sort of mock them up, um, and a mock of the, the bubble interface. And now what we're going to do is create this link here between bubble and API gateway. So we'll go back to browser, back to bubble. Um, I think this is, yeah, that's our demo. Um, so the way to do that, to connect bubble to external APIs is by using the API connector plugin. And by default, it's not installed. So to install it, you go to plugins and click add plugins. And this takes often takes a few seconds to load. There are tons and tons of different bubble plugins. 
And so um, this takes a second to load, but if you type in API, uh, once everything loads, the first plugin you should see is API Connector. It's from Bubble. It's the official plugin. Tons of apps are using it. Um, you click Install, and that's that. You don't need to be on a paid plan to use this. Um, so that's good. Um, and now you've got your API Connector plugin. Um, first thing to do is click Add Another API, and it creates a new API. Let's call it Recognition API. You can leave authentication uh, default. And so this, this API um, can house a bunch of different API calls. So if you had a bunch of different methods, um, different endpoints, you could define them here by add another call and add another call and so forth. Um, we're just going to define the one, so we'll delete these here. Um, so let's call it, um, click expand here to modify this. We'll say uh, recognition post call. Um, we want to change this use as data to action because we're going to be triggering this from a workflow action, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, change that. Can leave data type as JSON. We change the me method to post because back in API Gateway, we set, um, sorry, now we've got this demo stage here. We change this method to be a, a post uh, method instead of get. Um, yeah, so this is a, is a post. And then in here is where we paste the URL that um, that is uh, presented here. So copy that, whoops, close that, close that, uh, paste it in here. Um, don't need to do add any headers. You don't need to change the body type. Uh, and you don't need to add anything in the body just yet. Uh, we'll add stuff later. But now that's all you need to do. So we should be able to click Initialize Call and get the response. Um, oh, my mistake. Um, yeah, if we change this to text, let's just check that here. Um, yeah, OK, we change it to text, and we see hello from Launchable. Uh, yeah, Alex, this is a little bit tricky. Um, the, the return value um, of this function here, this body, is what's being um, ingested by Bubble. Um, so yeah, my mistake, sorry. So yeah, change it to text, and, uh, <laughs> and you're good. Um, later on, when we're returning the results from the recognition API, we're going to be returning JSON. So this is going to be switched back to JSON. But for the sake of, the, of this initial setup, we'll just change it to text, because all that's being returned is this string. Um, and just, again, to demonstrate how the process of changing this looks, uh, close that. If we go here, and we change this. Um, Let's just change this to hello bubble. We'll click deploy. Um, and note that we changed the Lambda function. We do not have to change the API gateway, uh, just the code in Lambda. And then we click re reinitialize, and we see hello bubble. So now we know that our API is talking, um, our, sorry, bubble is talking to our API, and our API is talking to Lambda. So we've got the, uh, if we go, Here we go. If we go back to um, our uh, architecture here, um, we know that this link is in place, this link is in place, this link, uh, and this link. So these first three things are all hooked together. Um, but we don't yet have any processing of the recognition um, API. Let's go back to three. Uh, OK, so if we go back into our design tab in the bubble canvas, here, we set this in the beginning to be just unknown. So it's just a default string. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to set a custom state on this object. And we're going to change the text that's displayed to be the content of the custom state. If you've never used Bubble before, or if you've used Bubble but not used custom states, uh, you can think of them as variables if you're coming from a programming background, or sort of as as buckets where you can store data if you haven't programmed before. Um, you can stick numbers or images or files or text or whatever into a custom state and then do things with it. So uh, it's a really useful feature. Uh, any object, I think, in Bubble can hold custom states, uh, which you 
can modify and use in various ways. So the way to do that is on this text object, we have it selected, um, text unknown. Up here on these icons, if you click the eye, you'll get this element inspector and custom states here at the top. Click add a new custom state. And effectively what you're doing now is defining a variable. And so the variable name and the variable type, um, but actually the state name and state type. And we'll call it, um, let's just call it text content. And we'll say the state type is text. We click create. Um, and now there's a default value field here. Um, let's change it to default unknown. doesn't matter what it is. Um, and what we're going to do now is change this to represent whatever's in this custom state. So we delete this text. And then um, we click the insert dynamic data button. We get this drop down. And what we want to do is this doesn't have a name anymore. Let's say uh, text main and call this whatever, but um, go back here. We now have it's more clear what this is. Click text main and it shows us we've got this text content, which is this. Uh, and then, um, yeah, and then now instead of just displaying, you can see it's blue, which means that it's dynamic content in bubble. Uh, instead of just typing the text that we typed in, which uh, you can still add if you like. Um, it'll it'll grab what's ever in this whatever is in this custom state and and put it in the text box. So if we preview this, um, we should see default unknown in this text box here. As we do, that's good. Um, but now what we want to do is we want to create a button to call uh, our API and return hello bubble and stick it into this custom state, so that after we click the bubble or sorry click the button. Um, get the text back, it'll stick it into this custom state and we'll see it displayed. Um, super straightforward, we add a button here. Um, yeah, I suppose I haven't gone through these element um, dialogues, these this uh, menu that you see anytime you click on an item, sorry, an object in Bubble, um, you have a bunch of options for things you can modify. And the options you will see depend on the kind of object that you've clicked on. So. Images have things like uh, you can upload an image to display. You can limit the image uh, image size. Um, you can set the width and the height and so forth. Buttons have different things. Um, the most important thing here is the start edit workflow, which is what happens when you click the button, um, whereas text has a text body and so on and so forth. Um, so we'll go back to the button, we'll click start edit workflow, and then we get this workflow screen. Now what's in here in this workflow tab is you've got here, you've got events. Um, so these things um, are how to trigger some event. So uh, in this case, when button A is clicked, then it's going to do whatever we define down here. We can also define things like when the page is loaded, we want to do something. You click here to add an action. We can define what it does. Um, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say, when this button is clicked, we want to trigger our API um, that we defined earlier. So we go to uh, plugins because it's under plugins because of the plugin the api connector plugin is how we're accessing this um, so button a is clicked we say plugins recognition api this is the api we define and this is the call within the api um, and so it's going to it's going to it's going to send a post request to the api and then we can access what comes back by adding another action. And we want to say um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the returned value from this and set the custom state of this, uh, sorry, of this text object to the return value. So we do that by saying, um, <laughs> I'm not sure where to put this, uh, set state of an element. And the element that we want to change the state of is this text main object. The custom state is the text content. And the value we want to set it to is the result of step one. So the result of step one is this API call. We want to set it to that. Um, so that should be all we need to do to trigger the API, get the data back, and set the display here to reflect that. So let's see if this works. Um, let's change the text displayed on the button to call recognition API. I don't know why I put this in caps. I don't think Amazon did, but whatever. Um, okay, so preview. Now we should get 
um, this button. You can see right now the text is default unknown as it as we defined it. We call the API. You can see it's loading, and boom, we've got hello bubble. So now this button is triggering this API, getting the data back and setting it uh, in here. So that's good. That means that we have the um, I keep going to the wrong spot. We've got bubble sending data to API gateway to Lambda, back to gateway and back to bubble. So these three are all connected. Okay, so um, so now we've sort of got the front end wired up. The next thing to do is figure out how to take an image from here, pass that to API gateway and parse it. Um, so I'm going to pause the video here for a second and come back. Okay, so now we're going to get into the uh, the coding part where we interact with recognition. Uh, this is probably the most complicated part, uh, especially if you've never coded before. Uh, if you have done some programming, uh, especially if you've done some Python programming, uh, what we're going to see is not super complicated or difficult. But if you've never seen it before, it might look a bit daunting. Um, so what I'm going to do is show the code that's been pre-written, uh, and we'll walk through it at a high-level overview, and then we'll recreate it from scratch, line by line, to see what it's doing. Um, and we'll be popping back and forth between Lambda, the Lambda console, and Bubble. Um, so we've pre-built it here under this function. So if we load it up, we can see, first of all, as I mentioned before, this API gateway trigger, um, just for context. Oh, and I wanted to back up and say one thing um, in API gateway. I sort of misspoke a little bit when I was talking about uh, resources and methods. I mentioned that we didn't have to create a resource because we weren't clustering a bunch of uh, API calls or API endpoints together. Um, but the root resource, which is what is defined by uh, default, um, is a resource. It's the it's the root resource. So um, when you're trying to navigate here, um, especially over here, uh, the resources tab will will bring this up, and the the first thing here is the root resource. Um, just to clarify a mistake from before. Anyway, to go back to the Lambda console, um, we've got this test recognition uh, function. If we open the the editor, um, here's the code. Um, one thing you can do in this screen is click that uh, to full screen the code editor, which can be helpful. Um, OK, so let's walk through this. So uh, at the top of the file, uh, we've got four imports. So if you've not worked with Python or coded before, these import statements are saying that you want to include other functionality from other packages, uh, or what are called modules in Python. So JSON we saw before. Uh, that's for handling JSON data. Uh, Boto3 is the Python 3 um, SDK for interacting with AWS services. Um, Base64 is a, a standard library in Python for interacting with uh, Base64 files, um, Base64 encodings, um, which we'll explain in a minute. Um, and then the URL lib.request uh, module, which is another standard library uh, in Python. Uh, this is to, um, actually, this was, I can take this out. This was from a previous uh, version. I'll explain what that was for later. Um, so these three libraries. Then we have underneath um, this def lambda handler. Um, so this function, lambda handler, is what is defined by default whenever you create a new Lambda function, uh, and this is called the um, the entry point, um, which you can configure. Uh, if we... So yeah, down here you can specify the handler, uh, and this is the function that's called when you call the Lambda function. We're just going to leave it as default, but um, you can have other files in your package um, that are called by default when you when you trigger the Lambda function. By default, it's this uh, lambda function, and lambda is the lambda function is the file, and lambda handler is the, the method or the function within the the file. Um, increase this again. So what? Uh, so yeah. So this is the method definition. It takes two parameters: the event and the context. The event is the data that's coming into the function from the API call, and so we're going to parse that to get the image out of it. Um, 
and then context has to do with the, the runtime context, I believe. We're not parsing this. We'll leave that alone. So within this Lambda handler, which is what I said gets, uh, as I said, gets run when we trigger the Lambda function, we're going to define another function, which does the bulk of the work. I'm going to call it detect labels, and it's not going to take any parameters. And it's going to be responsible for setting up a connection to recognition, sending the image over to the API, and returning the labels. For now, I'm just going to um, minimize. I'm going to fold that away. Um, so as this function is triggered, the first thing is that's um, executed is we're calling this method and storing the results in the variable response. Um, and then we're just returning that um, back to API Gateway. And in the body of the response, which is what we'll parse in bubble, um, we, we put the, the contents of that response. And the way we do that, uh, because it's a string, is we use this JSON module and the dump string, dump s method, to turn it into JSON formatted content. Um, because we're going to be parsing it as JSON on the on the bubble side. So to go back up to this method, which is where the, as I said, the bulk of the work is done. Um, first thing we do is we create a client um, for the recognition API. So client equals boda three dot client, um, and then you specify uh, you can have clients to S three and DynamoDB and all sorts of different AWS services. We tell it which service we want to have a client for. Next, we set the um, image variable to be um, a base64 representation of, um, or rather to parse the content of um, what's coming through in the event body as base64 to load this into memory um, and decode it from base64. So if you've never worked with base64, um, if you've never done any programming, it's it's just a way of representing files. Um, it can be useful for, for transferring data. Um, there are different ways that you can do this. You could, instead of passing the data as a base64 encoded string, you could pass the URL where the image is stored on the bubble uh, servers. Um, that's another way that you could do it. For the sake of simplicity, we're just going to pass the image as base64. Um, if you're curious about what this means, uh, Wikipedia has a good article on um, oops, on base64 that can explain some of the, the details. Um, but yeah, basically what we're going to do on the bubble side is we're going to use their built-in convert to base64 method to turn our image into a base64 string and pass that to API Gateway. Uh, and ultimately to this Lambda function. So um, after we have that loaded into memory, we're going to um, we're going to send it over to the recognition API. So we call our client, which we defined up here, and we call the detect labels method, um, which is uh, documented here. Sorry, in um, in the Boto three um, documentation as well as the the developer guide for uh, recognition. Um, it was client.detectLabels method uh, right here. Uh, and this is how we get the, the content that we saw uh, in the demo. That's how we get these labels here, is by calling this uh, getLabels method. Oops. Um, and then we're telling it that it's a bytes representation. Um, pardon me. Um, the other way that you can pass data is by using an S3 object. So if you're if you have images stored in an S3 bucket, um, by default when you upload an image to Bubble, it puts it into the uh, the Bubble S3 bucket. Um, you can probably reference it that way, um, but for the sake of simplicity, we're going to just uh, use bytes. Um, yeah, the max labels we wanted to return are 20. And so that's that's all you need to define. So um, this is sort of broken out to be a bit more readable. You can you could also write it like this um, if you're so inclined um, on a single line, if that's easier for you to read. But uh, I like it like this. 
So the yeah, so the parameters first parameter for this method, pardon me, uh, is image, which is a uh, a dictionary a key and a value of the type, and then the data, um, which we define here. And then the second argument is the max labels. I think this is optional. Um, and there's some other, uh, there's this other parameter, min confidence. Um, I got tripped up a little bit using this before. This is the confidence for the label and not for the instances, which we'll see the difference in a minute. Um, the, the labels, oops, the labels are here. So the fact that there are 10 different cars here that are labeled, um, that's captured here in the labels instances uh, list. But the fact that there's a car at all, um, this is the confidence for that. And that, that's what this parameter is for. Um, if you tell it you don't want any labels that are below a certain confidence level, it, it won't return them. So for example, you could set your confidence, min confidence to be 80%, and then all these will be, oops, sorry, architecture and below will be uh, dropped. OK. So after we've um, called that detect labels method, this is where we actually call the recognition API. We store the results in this response method. Uh, and the response is um, in this structure here, this um, JSON structure. And um, we're going to parse this to get the number of cats. Uh, so and that's what we do here. So we say for each label in response labels, which is here. So for each label, so this this is a label named car with various instances of cars. And then we have another label uh, down here, uh, which is automobile. We have another label vehicle, transportation, so on and so forth. Um, so we say for each of the labels in that structure, if the label's name is cat, so then we see that we have the label, we have the name. If it's cat, so here it's person, here it's transportation. Um, then set the response variable, which we uh, defined initially here when we called recognition and stored all the data there. Um, set a new field in that dictionary called cat count and set the value to the length of Oops. The label, uh, the labels instances list. Uh, so if that's confusing, we've got a label. Um, so for example, um, this is a label, and it has a name, and then it has instances, and this instances. Oh, that's not better. <laughs> um, sorry. This instance's key um, has a value, which it's kind of hard to see here, but this is a square bracket down here. Uh, down here, I think, is the other square bracket. And so this list is a list of um, dictionaries of instances. So the first element, um, the bounding box that shows you the where it is in the image, as well as the confidence, um, what we're doing with this uh, this method here is we're saying take the number of instances um, in that list. So um, for example, in the case of the cars, uh, there's a lot of them. So this is the label, the name is car, and then the instances list has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It has eleven elements. Oh, sorry, 12, 13, 14. So 14 elements. Um, so if we change this to if the name was car and we uploaded that photo, then this the, the, the length of that list would be 14, right? Um, yeah, hopefully that's clear enough. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's how we get the cat count, which is what we're going to display uh, after we call the, the API. Uh, this shouldn't be there. And then um, then we're going to return that response value. So the initial response from recognition, as well as this additional field that we stuck in there, um, we're going to return that to the calling, um, sorry, down here, the calling Lambda function um, into response. And then we're going to return that response uh, in this JSON object 
um, to API Gateway. So I'll go through that real quick again. Um, Lambda handler gets called by uh, API Gateway, and then we call this detect labels method. We set up a connection to recognition. We um, decode our base64 image. We call the API with this call, the recognition API. Um, and then we figure out how many um, for the label of cat, if there are cats in the image, um, how many instances are in that list. And then we return that. And then that gets passed back to uh, API Gateway. Okay, so here we are with our default Lambda function. Um, all we've changed is the, the text that it returns. And we're going to go through and build up the, the function step by step so we can see it come together. Um, so we'll take out this note here. Um, so we know that we need to import Boto3 to connect to recognition, and we need to import uh, Base64 module to deal with the image uh, as a Base64 encoded string. And then within this Lambda handler function, we're going to define another function called uh, detect labels. Uh, you don't need to do this. this. I just find this makes it a little bit cleaner to read. And we're going to have to uh, do a few things in here. We're going to first uh, create a client to later connect to recognition. Then we are going to <clears throat> uh, load the image, base64 image, into memory to pass to recognition. We are then going to uh, actually call recognition. From there, we're going to parse the response from step three to get the count of cats. And then we are going to return our, uh, our response. So the first thing to do is set up a client object, say client equals uh, boto3.client. And you specify what kind of client you want. We want recognition. Um, there is good autocomplete oops, in, uh, in this uh, code editor, Lambda console. Um, the next thing we want to do is load our image. And so the way we do that is we parse the event variable, which is um, the data that's coming into the Lambda function. Uh, specifically, the body field is where the image will be. Uh, and that body field is defined um, in bubble um, when we set up the API a little bit later to accept images. We're going to set the body field here. Um, so that'll make a bit more sense. We'll see a base64 encoded image pasted into here. A base64 string um, representation of the image. Uh, so yeah, so we want to load that into memory. We'll say image equals um, event body, but we know it's coming over. It's base64, so we do base64.b64 decode to convert that base64 encoded string into a bytes object because the recognition API is expecting uh, a bytes object, which we'll specify in a second here. Um, so then here we want to say uh, we're going to call the recognition API and we're going to set the, the response to this variable response. Oops. So response equals client dot detect labels. We're going to call this detect labels method. Uh, the first parameter that we're going to pass is, an, is image. And we're going to say that's equal to a dictionary uh, where the first key, uh, the only key, is the type of data. It's bytes and the actual data is image. And the second parameter we're going to pass, um, make sure to have this comma after your definition of this first parameter image. Second parameter is max labels. We'll set that equal to 20. Uh, uh, the next thing to do is to parse this response variable and get the number of cat instances out of it. So the way that we do that is we go through the response uh, we go through the labels list and check if one of them is cat. And then if there is one that's called cat, uh, we take the number of instances from it. So if we go to here, we can see this is the structure of the data. Uh, it's a dictionary. 
and there's a key labels which has a list value um, what we want to do is say in the labels if there's one that has the name cat then count the number of instances in uh, in that label so for example if we were looking at this example um, with the skateboarding uh, person um, we have down here a label of person and an instances of uh, a list of instances that has two it has one here and one here so that if we were to say if the label name is person then the count of instances would be two so we're going to do that with cats but we're going to say um we're going to say for label in response labels if label name equals cat then we want to set cat count equal to we'll set um, cat count in response in a second but um, well, I guess I'll do it now. Uh, response cat count. So we're creating a new field in that response dictionary called cat count, and we're going to set it equal to the length of that label, this label, um, its instances list. So if that all worked, then um, if it finds a label, sorry about that. If we find a label called cat, then it will count the number of instances in uh, that label dictionary. So the name cat, then the key instances, um, we'll see how many elements are, how many dictionary elements are in that list. Um, oops, sorry. So that should work. And then we just return response and then we're done. Uh, that's all of the logic, I believe. Uh, one other thing we have to do is change this here. So we want to return response. Um, and that should give us everything we need. So we connect a recognition, pass the image, and return a response. So with a bit of luck, uh, this will be uh, working. So we'll click deploy. And now we should be able to access this through API Gateway. Now, um, if we try to call bubble if we try to call this through bubble now uh, it's going to fail because previously it was just returning a string uh, without passing any data through this event variable but now because we're parsing this we need to change the way that uh, change what bubble is passing to api gateway uh, and to do that we need to do a little bit of a hack a uh, bit of a workaround um, specifically we need to get a base 64 encoded string to um, to initialize our API call. So if we click reinitialize call now, anytime you change your API, um, uh, if you change any of the settings, then you need to reinitialize it and it'll just um, hang for 20 seconds or 30 seconds and then it will we'll get an error message. And the reason is we don't have anything in the body, specifically the base64 encoded image um, that the Lambda function is expecting. So what we oh, sorry about that. Um, what we will do is we'll wait for this error message to come up, and then we will. So it'll say there was an issue setting up your call 502. Um, so what we'll we'll do is we'll get a base 64 encoded string here. There are different ways to do this. Um, if you if you program, there are a whole bunch of different ways to do this, but there's a way to do it without programming, just in Bubble. Um, and so what we'll do is. We'll create a new data type whenever we upload an image, and we'll store the base64 encoded representation of that image in the database. We'll go copy that from the database, um, paste it into um, paste it into here, and then just delete that data. Uh, we just need an example to initialize the call, and then after that, we should be able to actually call the uh, API gateway and Lambda pair. Okay, so what we do uh, is we go to the workflow for this uh, button. Um, we can do this different ways, actually. Let's say, let's just do it automatically when we upload an image. So what we'll do is we'll go into data and data types. And this is where you can define um, custom objects, custom data types in Bubble. Uh, we want to say image temp. Uh, we're not going to be keeping this, so we'll just say image temp. Uh, we only need a single field, which is image as say base 64 and it's going to be a string it's going to be text let me click create and then what we're going to do is whenever 
the user uploads an image, we're going to create a new kind of, or sorry, a new instance of image temp, and we're going to set this image as base64 text to the base64 representation of the image. So what we do here is we um, we say start edit workflow. You can do it by right clicking and then clicking here, or you can also go to workflow and add an event like this. Um, both will do the same thing. Um, you can say when, um, sorry, I'll say start at a workflow when its value is changed. So when picture uploader A's value is changed, what we want to do is create a new thing. Uh, we want to create an image temp and we want to set its image as base64 field to this picture uploader's value, which is the image itself, but encoded in base64. So hopefully this ties together. Um, hopefully this makes sense now why, why we were using base64 here. So now if we preview our app, um, if we go before, while that loads, if we go into our app data, um, we can ignore all of this. This is just from earlier testing. Um, we want to look at image temps. There's nothing in here right now. If we go here and click upload image, and say this three cats here, um, it should upload in a second. I should have picked a smaller image. It's taking a bit long. Um, there we go, those three cats. In fact, I am going to upload a smaller image because we're going to have to pass this to API Gateway to uh, initialize the call. So I'll pass a down sampled image of the same thing. Um, now, if we go back to our database, we come back to our database and we see this image as base64 field is now populated. Um, we've got two entries from the two images that we uploaded. Um, so we're going to take we're going to copy this text. Sorry, we're going to copy this text and paste it into um, into this body here, and that should send the image as base64 over to API Gateway, and hopefully trigger our Lambda function. So going back to our data, um, we can click this pencil icon to edit, click inside this field, and then Control A to so, excuse me select the text, Control C to copy it cancel out of this menu and come back over here and paste it in and we've got this big long string now and hopefully if we click initialize call it will um, it'll pass this image to API gateway and return a response to us um, it appears not to be working perhaps perhaps because this needs to be JSON um, so I'm going to try to short circuit that um, that API call that's going to error out anyway. If it takes more than five or six seconds when you set up one of these APIs, it almost always means that it's um, there's an error. They don't usually take very long to, to connect. So uh, let's go expand this, expand the call, um, change this to JSON, and see if this works. It does not appear to be working. So there's two different places that we can look to figure out what's going wrong here. Um, the first is in the bubble server logs, and the second is in the CloudWatch logs. Uh, so this is on the Amazon side, and this is on um, the bubble side. So if we go to server logs and click search, we will, yeah, there's the error again. Click search, it should bring up, um, Okay, it's not showing us anything actually. Uh, that's fine. We'll probably get more information from CloudWatch anyway. If you've never seen CloudWatch, um, this is how you will debug Lambda and API Gateway stuff. Uh, so it's good, I guess, to go through it quickly. Uh, when you open CloudWatch, you'll see this dashboard with summary statistics. Um, you want to click on log groups. So by default, when you create a new Lambda function, um, CloudWatch will create a new um, log group for your function. And the one that we're testing is recognition demo two. So we click here and we want the most recent one. These are sorted um, in reverse chronological order. Click on that and we can see here there's an error. So name response is not defined. Okay, so there's a function 
um, we're not returning our variable, it appears, uh, in the right spots. So return response. What are we missing? Oh, right, we're not actually calling this detect labels. We missed that. So we need to say um, response equals detect labels. So we forgot to do that, um, or I forgot to do that. Um, if we deploy it now and try again to call it in bubble, hopefully now it will work. But maybe not. So we're doing some live troubleshooting. So while that's uh, failing, we can we don't need to wait for that to uh, complete. We can come back here and check the logs again and see uh, what's going on. Aha, access denied. So I mentioned earlier that we need to give our Lambda function permission to access the, uh, the recognition API, and we haven't done that yet. And so that's what's going on here. So it, it is hitting the API gateway and trying to call um, the Lambda function, but uh, and the Lambda function is then trying to call the recognition API, but it doesn't have permission to do so. So to fix that, we go into our um, go back into our Lambda function. There's different ways that you can do this, but um, we go to configuration and permissions here. It'll show us the role name that was created when we created the Lambda function, and we can click this to take us to the IAM console, the Identity Access Management console. Um, you won't have to do this, um, probably, if you don't have NoScript installed. Um, so we get this, and what we want to do uh, is attach the policy that allows recognition access to this function. So we click Attach Policies. Um, and if we type, start typing recognition, we want full access because we're triggering a call. And we click Attach Policy, and that's all we have to do. And now, hopefully, <laughs> the call will work. And there we go. And so now this is the response from our API. So we have our labels list, which is what we were parsing, with the names and the instances and so forth. And then down at the bottom here, we have this cat count variable, which is what we defined um, and stuck on the end there uh, in, sorry, in this line here. So response cat count equals this. That's the variable that we're actually interested in for the sake of this demo. And we can see it's three, which is you know the, the image that we uploaded and took the sample base64 data from. Um, it's three, so it's correct. We click Save, and we're almost done. So we now have uh, a way of triggering um, from within Bubble our API and getting the cat count back. And so now we just need to see if we can um, do this from within the app. So let's retrace our logic a little bit. Um, we click and upload an image, and then we have this workflow that says when we click the button, um, sorry, um, pass. So we're passing here, we're passing. Um, this is the string that we pasted in here. Sorry, in here. Um, it just takes the the string that you use to initialize the call and sticks it in there, but that's uh, that's not what we want. What we actually want is to use dynamic data from whatever was in the picture uploader. So we say uh, picture uploader's value um, encoded in base64, just like we did when we were setting up here, uh, which we can now delete, and we can delete this data type as well, um, just as a side note. Um, so yeah, so it's going to pass that base64 encoded image to recognition. Now what we want to do is we want to set, um, before we were setting the text content variable to, um, or custom state rather, to the result of the API when it was only returning a single value in the body. But now if we click result of step one, we have all these different variables that are returned, the labels. You can take the labels names or instances or whatever. What we actually want, though, is this cat count. 
So let's do that again. Result of step one's cat count. Um, and I think uh, if you get this red text, it means that um, the type of value that bubble is expecting for the custom state doesn't match what you're putting in here. And so here, this is a number, but we defined the custom state earlier to be text. So you could either um, convert this to text, um, not like that, um, or you can change the custom state type to a number, which uh, is, I think, more sensible. So what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll say that this is now a number and by default, we'll set it to one, two, three. And that should be all we need to do. So now it sets, it's blue. So it sets the cat count to uh, what it should be. And then this here, um, we can also delete this. Now this was doing the same thing, um, creating a new image in base64. So that should be it. So now if we preview our app, we should have all the functionality working. Um, so by default, it's one, two, three. We're going to pick an image, we'll pick three cats down sampled, and we get our cats and click our button. And with a bit of luck, we get three. Hooray! So let's try another one. We'll try seven cats and see if it works. Um, yeah, these images are pretty large, so they take a while to upload. That's why I created this down sampled one with the three cats. Um, I'll show you a little trick that you can do to make that faster in a second here. Um, the bigger the image, the more data you have to send to your API and, and so forth, so the slower um, slower things goes. Now, okay, that's uh, interesting. So we just had a, let's see if I can get that error again. Um, we had a timeout error. Um, I meant to show this earlier. So um, what's happening is it's taking too long to call uh, for the Lambda function to call the um, recognition API, which you can see if we come back to our CloudWatch logs um, and then refresh it, we'll see that there's a timeout error, I suspect. Um, error, uh, no, that's not it. No, that's not right. Um, that's surprising. Hmm. This is from a while back. Um, so sometimes this refresh button in the CloudWatch logs doesn't work. It won't, it won't actually fetch the newest logs. So you have to reload the whole page. Um, and then we should see the newer ones. You can see here it's 2.30. It's late. Um, and the last log was showing from 2.22, which was the, the previous bug that we had fixed. No, it's still not showing here, so that's surprising. Um, well, we can see here, it appears to be working. Um, in any case, I'm fairly certain that what's happening is the, uh, the timeout setting for this function is not long enough. Um, by default, the, uh, a Lambda function will timeout after three seconds, and it often takes five or six seconds to call this API, especially with a large image, it takes longer. Um, so what we want to do here is go to general configuration and edit and set the timeout, say to 15 seconds, click save. And um, now if we come back here, call the recognition API again, uh, more of a time buffer, we're still getting the same error. Hmm. Well, let's figure out what's going on here. So, well, my apologies for this, but perhaps it's useful to see how to, to troubleshoot these things. Um, hmm. So let's check our bubble logs again and see if that's informative. So here's the JSON object. It just says internal server error. It's not telling us why. Um, um, hmm. 
it may have to do with um, what's happening to the image when it gets uploaded. Um, that text is strange. Um, so yeah, this, this strange text here is making me think it has something to do with the image. So what we can do, um, well, first of all, let's try it with a different image and see if that, uh, if that solves the problem. So we have five cats in this image call the recognition API and ah, it works. Uh, it gives us the wrong number, it gives us six. Um, but we saw when we tested it in here in the demo console that uh, that is what it will give us. So we've got this extra box here. Um, it should be one, two, three, four, five, but we get this, this extra one that's clumping these two cats together. Um, so there's a way to, to parse that. Um, or to, to eliminate that, um, which I can show in a minute. Um, basically what you need to do is go through, loop through each instance and say, if the confidence is um, below a certain level, then drop it. Um, but yeah, so we know then the fact that it's working with these, the three and the five cats, but not the seven means that it has something to do with the image. So what we can do to um, maybe fix that is uh, you click on the image uploader and there's a there's an option to uh, limit the image size before upload. So this will downscale large images, um, which will make things faster and it might fix the issue that we were just seeing. Let's find out. Um, let's pick that seven cats image again and see what happens. click the call recognition API and we get seven. Yeah, so um, I don't know if it was too much data or it was just taking too long to send it, but um, I, if, you're, if you're doing something like this, I would recommend um, using this in many cases. If you need high definition images, then not. You obviously don't wanna do this, but um, I found that doing this actually helps uh, with the, it makes the results of the API more accurate. So we saw that with this not checked, the the, uh, the five cat image returned the number six. But when we check that box and downscale the image and then send it over, we actually get the right number, I think, um, of five. Yeah, so we get five here. So that's it. That's the app in a nutshell. You can, uh, you know, you can style these things and you can, um, you know, you might want to group these elements into a group and then, um, do things like color them and and make it pretty. Um, for our purposes here, we're just illustrating the um, how to connect the API. But you know, we could say give this a a color and make it look nicer. Um, yeah, let's make this text. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just sort of changing things randomly here, but. Um, once you've got all the, the plumbing in place, you can um, make this look nicer. So not sure this looks any nicer, but anyway, um, that is the um, recognition API on Bubble and machine vision powered applications on Bubble. Uh, I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And we will be releasing more videos like this using uh, other Amazon APIs. Um, using Bubble. So if this was interesting to you, then stay tuned.